everyone grumbles about the weather. Most people think it rains too often and too much in Britain. But the truth is, we need every drop we can get. 4,000 million gallons of water are used each day up and down the country. And that's twice as much as 20 years ago. Yet most of the 155,000 million gallons of rain that fall on the British Isles each day either runs out to sea or evaporates into the atmosphere, leaving only 5% for use. And in any case, most of it falls in the wrong places. Unless something is done to build up the nation's water supplies and transport water from the wetter to the drier areas, the taps could run dry. There's a severe water shortage in many areas already. The Hampton Middlesex Waterworks serves highly populated districts in an area of low rainfall and, like other water undertakings, it's been facing the three driest years of the century. Water today has to be used over and over again. It's pretty cheap at sixpence a tonne, or 224 gallons, considering the effort that goes on at Waterworks to make sure that the 52 million people of these islands get their 50 gallons a day delivered to their taps entirely free of germs. Water stored in reservoirs needs sand at the bottom to filter it. The sand has to be removed periodically and washed clean before it can be used again. The reservoirs help to purify the natural water, which is taken from the Thames. But they also encourage the growth of small green plants, known as algae, which multiply in the still water and clog up the filter bed sand. By the time the stored river water has passed through a series of primary and secondary filters, it's almost pure. In the Metropolitan Water Board area, the water is pumped to consumers through 9,000 miles of pipelines. It's necessary to make the water 100% pure. This is done by adding chlorine to it. The Hampton pumping station generates all its own electricity and is the largest in the country. All taste of the chlorine, which has been added, will have disappeared before the water leaves the pumps. With such large quantities of water needed on tap, it's a precious commodity. It doesn't do to waste any, and water authorities aim to keep leakages in their pipelines down to 10%. Many leaks can't be detected with listening apparatus, and so laughing gas is added to the mains. Sniffing devices detect the gas when it comes out in the leaking water and register the fact on instruments. Once a leak's been found, the gas is run out of the mains so that none reaches the customers, which is probably as well because the country's water situation is no laughing matter. The Water Resources Act of 1963 called for action to conserve existing water resources and plan for future demands. The Water Research Association's laboratories at Marlow is testing the use of new materials in water engineering. They're also working out the flows and pressures likely to be needed in various towns' water systems in the 1980s. This computer can even calculate the cheapest way of going about a job. They're designing water treatment plants for waterworks of the future. This presents some tricky problems in chemical engineering. This pilot scale model takes its water from the Thames, and this is what it looks like.
in its raw state, before the plant goes to work on it, it's probably somebody else's bath water. But after it's been treated, it's as good as new and completely safe to drink. The snag about taking water from rivers is that many are polluted. When the first detergent powders were used, instead of soap, they used to interfere with the chemical action of the purification plants. Those on sale today no longer do this. Electricity generating stations and industry use vast quantities of water, 2,000 million gallons a day, and the demand is increasing at an alarming rate. The canals throughout the country provide a convenient, ready-made water grid. The British Waterways Board, who owns them, sells water to industries along the route. They use the water and then return it to the canal. The board also sells water to farmers. But the water used by agriculture is lost. It evaporates into the air. The seawater resources around the coasts may have to be tapped one day. Britain exports desalination equipment to countries where rainfall is almost nil, as well as all kinds of water treatment plants like this one in Watford's Colm Valley. Britain, however, is not exporting her hydrologists. The country needs 40 water scientists, but has only 20. The immediate target of the Water Resources Board is to build more reservoirs to store water and distribute supplies from the rainier parts of the country to the drier areas. This new reservoir at Diddington in Huntingdonshire will hold 13,000 million gallons when it's brought into use. Reservoirs can be beautiful as well as useful. In an age of shorter working hours and increasing leisure, they can also be used for sport and recreation. It's strange that the country which gave the world the Macintosh should be facing a severe water shortage. Britain's three years of near drought conditions would be regarded in many countries as a deluge. Enough rain falls on the British Isles, even in the lean years, to meet all domestic, industrial and agricultural needs. What has to be done is to collect it and distribute it evenly. Otherwise, it could one day be a case of water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. <laughs>